Good morning, and welcome to St. Pius on this blessed Easter Sunday. All of our music this morning will be found in your worship aid. Let's begin by joining together in singing, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ, the Crucified One, the Lord and Savior of the world, He is risen, the tomb is empty, and we are free. So let us prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred Easter mysteries by acknowledging our sins and our need for Jesus in our lives. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God, 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, Rise up in the light of life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, you know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did 
both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us. The witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and of the dead. To him all prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord.
May the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciples whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb. They do not know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloth there, but he did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloth there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed, for they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Yes, when you get a new pastor, there are a few things that change, such as having an Alleluia after the gospel. It's Easter, because this is our time. The Lord has been raised. The tomb is empty. If you remember at the very beginning, we talked about the fact that God created us and he wanted nothing more than to be in an intimate relationship with us. God delights in each and every one of us. God created us so that we could be in union with him. But our first parents, and all of us as well, believed a lie. We believed that we did not need God, that we could do it all on our own, that we're smart enough, we're good enough, we're strong enough, that we've got everything that we need, and that God is just a myth. He's just a fairy tale. God is just a figment of our imagination, a way to explain why we do what we do. But we believe the lie that we didn't need God or that God could take second or third or a thousandth place, that there were things in the world that were going to be more important than God. And so our first parents ate the fruit from the tree. They tried to create themselves into God. And every time God tried to reach out to our race, to humanity, we would listen, but we would soon forget. We'd return back to our old ways of doing things. I mean, just think about it. For 40-some days, we've given up watching our tablets or eating chocolate or drinking caffeine or whatever it is. And how many of us this morning, that was the first thing we did, is we ran for the Easter basket. We went to the espresso machine. We just delighted in our former ways. Because what do we tell ourselves? Oh, we just do this for Lent. We don't do it for Lent. We do it for Jesus. We just happen to do it during the season of Lent. But of course, we forget that it's all for Jesus. We believe that lie that we're the center of the universe. 
And God keeps reaching out to us, as he did our forebears in the faith. God continues to call us back into right relationship with him. And how did he finally get our attention? He sent his son. The one whom he loves above everything else. The one who is love. God sent his son into the world to fight for us to win the victory, to help us to overcome sin and death which are enslaving us, which are keeping us bound. And his son came in the quiet of the night, in the most unexpected way. He was born in a manger. He became food to feed us. And he grew just as you and I grew. I mean, he started off just like this little one in the second row, or these, all of these little ones in the second row. He was a teenager. He had zits. I mean, just think about that. Jesus had zits. He could not escape the human condition. He endured everything that we endure. But Jesus took all of that and he said that he would be willing to die for us. Not just a normal death, but he was willing to die the agony of the cross. Jesus was willing to be humiliated, stripped naked, spat upon, have insults thrown at him, being beaten and whipped. Jesus willingly chose to die for you. Jesus chose to die for you because he loves you, because he wants you to know that he wants this relationship with you. And in case we missed what he did for us, the Father put the exclamation point on it. It's what we celebrate this day. He raised his son from the dead. The tomb is empty. He is not there. But you know, one of the strange things about all of this When you read the Gospels, we just read from the Gospel of John, we've been reading from the Gospel of Mark this Lenten season, read Matthew and read Luke. No one is there at the moment of the resurrection. No one sees what the resurrection actually is. All we know is that the stone was very large. It was huge. Kind of an odd detail for the gospel writers to tell us, isn't it? The stone is large. The women were not able to move it away by themselves. So if the women didn't do it, what about the Jewish people? Well, they wouldn't want to do it because if they were the ones to remove the stone, then people could tell fanciful stories about it. If it's not the Jews, then it's got to be the Romans who did it. Well, what would they gain from moving the stone, this large stone? Nothing. They would gain somebody who opposes Caesar, who would put himself in opposition to Caesar. And Caesar was God. So what about the disciples? Could they have done it? Of course, it's possible. But yet, look at how each one of them died. They died confessing that Jesus is Lord. They gave their lives. They were tortured. They suffered. They were brutally murdered. And all the while confessing that Jesus is Lord. 
Why would they confess a lie and all of them? The fact is, the tomb was empty. The burial claws were the only witness to the resurrection. And then the beloved disciple goes, as we just heard, and he peers in and he looks and he believes. And he tells them, Jesus is alive. We are free. We no longer have to be under sin and death. We are now adopted sons and daughters of a Father who loves us, a Father who delights in us. And what do they do? They go out and they share the good news. Jesus is alive. He is present here on this altar. We will receive his very body and blood, soul and divinity. We will bring him into our very bodies in the most intimate of ways. Why? Because he loves us. He told us that he is going to remain with us. And so he does. The question that lies before each and every one of us is quite simple. How are we going to respond? How are we going to live our lives knowing that God loves us so much that his son died for us and is alive? Will our lives radiate the joy of the gospel? Will people know this great joy just because when they see us in times of trouble, in times of sorrow, in times of suffering, in times where we feel oppressed, they will see that even though the world seems to be crashing around us, there's something deep within that just says, I have found joy, I found meaning, I found life. Will people know the joy of the gospel in the way that we treat one another. Because we see examples all over the place where people are put down because of what they say or what they do or what they look like or what they don't say or do or don't look like. But as Christians, we know that Jesus is alive and that each person has been made in his very image and his very likeness. So even though we may not agree, and the earliest Christians did not agree with the Romans, they didn't agree with the Greeks, but they were known because of the love, the respect they showed to each and every person, especially those who were on the periphery. When illness struck, when plague hit, Christians were the first ones to go in and minister to the sick and to the dying. Everyone else would flee away, but the Christians saw the very image of God before them. They were animated by the presence of Christ. Do they see the same in us? Does the resurrection make a difference in our lives? Do we believe this proclamation that he is alive? Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe that Jesus is Lord? He's Lord of heaven and earth. He is the risen one. He is the one who is alive. Jesus the one who gives us life, do you believe?
My dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. Now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? Amen. I do. Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Amen. Do you renounce Satan, the author and prince of sin? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever.
Let us bring our hearts and our petitions to the Lord, trusting that in his time and according to his will, he will answer every prayer. That our Holy Father, Pope Francis, will inspire renewed Easter faith and encourage Christ-based love for the poor of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all nations of the world, that they will act to protect the precious gift of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have been baptized and welcomed into our church this Easter, that they may walk anew in the light of the risen one. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family of God gathered here, that we may joyfully bear witness to the risen Christ and reflect him in our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, that having died with Christ, they will return to life with him, especially Daniel Weiss. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our parish in special need of our prayers, and for Maria Urich, the special intention of this Mass, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, in your love you have raised your Son from the dead. Help us to always live in the joy of his resurrection who lives and reigns forever and ever. I invite any young people to come forward with their offerings. Please join in singing, Alleluia, Love is Alive.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, 
Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Pius X, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of that peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Please join us in singing, I am the bread of life.
Let us pray. Take a step. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The I Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity, and in his compassion, defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. May he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. This Mass is ended. Go in peace, glorifying God by your lives. Thanks be to God. As we go forth this morning, please join together in singing, Jesus is Risen.